IIoT, the unified namespace uh, example, take zero. In this example here, well, I'm gonna give you an example of a unified namespace that we use uh, when we build a, uh, a data hub or a unified namespace using either Ignition or Factory Studio. Uh, you don't have to use those two platforms, you can use lots of other ones, but the ones that we generally use are Ignition. This example right here I'm gonna use using Ignition. This will work for both Ignition or Factory Studio, but I'm gonna talk in Ignition terms in this example, okay? So what we're looking at here is this is tag structure. So anybody who's been inside the Ignition Designer, this should look familiar to you, okay? I have a folder called Coke Bottling, which is the name of my tag provider inside of Ignition. I've got a folder called Dallas, which is the location, it's the plant that we're using in, in the Coke Bottling example. And then this is the area level, this is the ISA 95 level. So I've got a, dir a directory called Batch, which is an area called Batch, an area called Fill, and an area called Capping. Okay, and then underneath the batch, I have all of my individual production lines. So batch, I have maybe batch one, batch two, batch three, batch four. Under fill, I have fill one, two, three, four, five, six. Under cap, I have cap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then on the edge is I have an edge directory for every PLC. It may not be called edge. It could be the actual name of the, the PLC's ID. But I've got a directory called edge or PLC, and then underneath the PLC, I have all the individual process tags. So tag1.value, I may have thousands of tags inside that directory. All right, this is, this is a very common structure. Anybody who's working with uh, any off-the-shelf piece of software is gonna be familiar with this type of structure. Even if you're working with Wonderware, this should look mostly familiar, although in Wonderware, they actually abstract this. So they'll have just one big, huge, massive list of flat tags, and then you can basically create an abstraction layer that creates this asset structure, okay? In our unified namespace, we're, we're not gonna do that. This is, this is the root namespace. This is the single source of truth for all data. So right now we have our PLCs are publishing into this namespace already, okay? Our folders line up with our PLCs that lived in the field. Um, but we also, what we do is we will create, uh, our MES system will also publish into the namespace, okay? So what it's going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to consume information from the edge directory, and then it's going to publish information back into the namespace. And it's going to publish it in lots of different places. But we are going to give the MES system a location, many locations in the namespace to put in its, its information. So under the Dallas location, we're going to have a directory called MES. And inside of the MES directory, we're gonna have an OEE tag that the MES system publishes into that gives you total OEE for all of Coke bottling, okay? Under the batch area, we will have an MES directory. And that MES directory is gonna contain all of the OEE calculations, current uh, total total parts processed on the shift, all that stuff inside the MES namespace, okay? So same thing with fill, okay? Same thing with batch, okay? You're going to end up, the MES system is going to publish back into the namespace with all of the pertinent MES data. There, I'm only using the MES directory, but understand that you're gonna have lots and lots of tags, lots of data inside of that directory. The ERP system is going to do the same thing. So the ERP system is also going to have a directory. And inside of that directory is going to contain the ID for the Dallas location. So in this case, SAP, you guys will be familiar, SAP IDs are, you know, like I met my plant ID may be something like 1043. So I will have an ERP directory that contains the plant ID inside that directory. I will also have an ERP directory at each of these layers. I may have an ERP directory here that gives me the ID of the PLC if that's an asset ID. But the ERP directory is gonna contain all of the pertinent information for that layer in the ISA 95 data model, okay? So what's gonna happen here is the ERP system is also 
going to consume and produce data for our namespace, okay? And the PLC is doing the same thing. At the lo long term, what will happen is the PLC is going to receive instructions from that namespace that may come back from the machine learning layer. Now, this holds true for um, this holds true for any application. So when I in, when I install my warehouse management system, and my warehouse management system is handling um, inventory for say the raw materials for the batch, um, we may end up with a warehouse man a WMS directory that contains a data set that contains the next five uh, bags of raw material we're going to use to make the the you know mix the coke okay um, but th this is the concept of the unified namespace instead of having this MES data living inside the MES system it lives over here the MES system still has its own namespace and the PLC has its own has all of its own tags the MES system has all of its own tags the ERP system has all of its own tags instead of having it only live over there and we and we create static connections for all the information we care about we don't do that what we do is take all of our data and put it in one location this is an example of a unified namespace so now what can happen is I can bring in another application and other so uh, other application that needs information from all of these layers. And what we can do is we can say, uh, I, let, let's say I'm, I'm, running, um, I'm running batch optimization for just batch line one. Well, I can write that program and get all of, it, all of its information from here. And it contains all the MES, the ERP, it contains all of the information we care about. The fundamental difference between the unified namespace and the way that we do things today is, I'll draw an illustration. Uh, think about it, um, when we first started connecting software to PLCs using OPC servers, did we grab all of the tags from the PLC? No. Why not? Bandwidth. Right, we, in the old days, when we connected our OPC server to our PLC, did we grab every tag? No, we did not grab every tag. We only grabbed the ones we were going to use. In fact, we stuffed all the alarms into an integer. And That's right. And the reason why was we were limited by plant networks. Multiplied floats by 10 and stuffed them into integers. That's right. And, and the reason why was because we were limited by the plant networks. Um, or we just didn't think that that mattered. What have we discovered today? What we've discovered today is that if we had a little bit more vision back then, when we did those integrations, we wouldn't have to go through and grab all those tags now. Because now machine learning algorithms, they want everything. They want everything out of the PLC. Your MES system wants everything. I want every alarm. I don't want you to predefine just five states of my machine. I want to know what are all the infinite number of, of states. Like what is the state of a machine? Is a machine just running or stopped? No. Uh, if, if my machine goes down on e-stop, okay, and my MES system consumes that downtime reason as an e-stop, what happens when we discover that the actual reason it went down was because the welder, which is cell number five, uh, the welder, uh, the, the um, servo that drives the welder went bad? How do I change it from it went down for e-stop, which doesn't mean anything to me, it just went down on e-stop, to it went down because the welder went bad. I have a person go in and make that determination. A person's got to go back in and update the downtime reason from e-stop to welder, or he's got to put comments in. Um, long term, we know that's not the case. Would it be possible for us to determine that the reason the machine went down is because there was a failure on the welder? Yes. Without us explicitly sending a bit back, we could, in theory, look at all of the logic and ascertain from the logic that it was the welder that caused the problem, right? That's what machine learning does. Machine learning will be able to look at all that information and determine that it was a failure in the welder. Okay? That's the holy grail. That's the holy grail, that's right? And, and that's the reason we're going through this whole process. It's also the reason that we send everything 
from the PLC into the namespace. We don't want to make assumptions about we, what's important. Stop making assumptions about how the, the, way, the way the data will be consumed. Because trust me, there are, there are artificial intelligence algorithms that are 100 million times smarter than you are that are going to see relationships that you cannot see with the naked eye. Stop making assumptions about how the data will be consumed. Okay? All right, cool.